Cop stops man that looks like his late son, then sees flag on dashboard. Nothing can strike fear into your heart like seeing the unmistakable blue and red flashing lights of police car flagging you down. Your mind races with all the possible things it could be for. Had you been speeding? Perhaps the taillight was out. Pushing the terror down, you smile your most innocent smile and prepare to talk. Once you've made your way to the side of the road, there's little chance of you leaving without a ticket. But this wasn't the case for William Jasinski at all. He was a war veteran, just minding his own business while driving down the road, when suddenly he was pulled over for no good reason he could think of. William grew up in Summers, New York and studied at Arlington High School. Since he was a boy, he'd wanted to serve his country and dreamed of becoming a sergeant one day. He expressed his desire to join the U.S. Army when he was only 10 years old. Naturally, his mother was concerned and she had every right to be. William's chance to fulfill his dreams came in 2013 during the Iraq War. He was among the 177,194 troops who were sent into the war zone, leaving his girlfriend, family, and indeed his entire life as he knew it behind. He prepared for the worst. His family waited for him, praying that he wouldn't be one of the 4,000 who never made it home. Thankfully, William was sent home after just a year of service, but he returned a changed man. The things he'd seen in the war had such an impact on him that he just couldn't resume his normal life. His family convinced him to seek counseling and it seemed to be helping, at first. But William just couldn't shake the shadow that seemed to follow him everywhere he went. That is, until a strange encounter on a lonely road gave him the jolt he needed. After his last lackluster counseling session, Williams began the long drive home to his home in LaForce, Texas. With his eyes on the white line, he put his body into autopilot and let his mind wander. He was thinking of his daughter at home. If it weren't for them, well, he didn't even want to think about that. That's when he registered that the car behind him had been following for some time now. His eyes flew to the odometer and he breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that he wasn't traveling over the speed limit by mistake. And he had checked that his lights were in working order the previous day, so the police had no reason to be following him. Perhaps he was just being paranoid, he reassured himself. But the little voice in his mind egged him on, just to be sure. Suddenly, he saw the flash of blue and was almost relieved. That was the sign. The cop wanted him to pull over, which he'd do. Then he'd go through the motions. License presented, some chit-chat, and then he'd be on his way. Or so he thought. William's day began to get a little weird when he rolled down his window to ask the officer outside what the matter seemed to be. And when the officer said that he actually wasn't in any trouble and hadn't done anything to break the law, William noticed that his eyes had moved to the dashboard of his car, coming to rest on something they both held dear. William was a former heavy-wheeled vehicle operator for the U.S. Army. He also served in Iraq. So when he saw that the police officer was looking at the American flag that he kept there for remembrance, he never expected what happened next to unfold. It began with the officer simply wanting to give thanks, but it became so much more. After the usual chit-chat, the officer finally opened up about why he was so grateful to the war vet. He began by asking about William's time over there and slowly it unfolded. The story that the unnamed officer told him had a strong connection to everything that William had been through, and soon William would know everything. The veteran prominently displays two symbols from his time in the military on his car. One is an army sticker on his bumper and the other is an American flag which the officer had been drawn to. William told the officer a bit about his trip. I went to Iraq, did a 15-month stint out of Fort Benning, and that's when everything started spilling out. The officer in turn told William some news that was haunting him to this very day. And seeing William only brought up more unresolved pain. My son went to Iraq, he didn't make it home. Knowing the pain of having been there firsthand, William offered his condolences and also his help. I'm so sorry to hear that. Just finished a PTSD program. PTSD is short for post-traumatic stress disorder, something not uncommon among military men and women. I see you have a flag in the truck, the one we got for him. It's at the house. It's just like that. The officer asked him a question or a favor that William simply couldn't refuse. Can I ask a question? Would you mind stepping out and receiving a hug? You remind me of my son. You look exactly like him. When I pulled you over, it was because you look so much like him. I thought you were my son. 
I still don't believe he's gone most days. The officer said with tears in his eyes. So did William hug the officer? You better believe it. According to his Facebook post, it wasn't just any old hug either. With tears in both our eyes, I got out and hugged that man. I'm talking about for a minute or two crying, down to our knees crying. I needed that, William wrote. Both men seemed to release some grief, with a total stranger. At that moment, William felt himself let go of something that he'd been holding on to for so long. It was as if the hug from the policeman had dissolved William's fears and trauma. He almost felt it evaporate and rise up into the ether as both men stood at the empty road, hugging and crying. It was exactly the release he had needed. It was that heartfelt moment of human contact with a total stranger that had healed his PTSD far more than any counseling session could. He couldn't wait to go home to his wife and daughter and tell them everything.